Hi, Movie Master here. The movie opened in the city of Berlin where an eight-year-old boy Bruno is running around playing with his friends on the way back home. It is World War II when Hitler is commanding the country and the Jewish people are deprived of their rights. Bruno returns to his home and finds it being decorated and cleaned. He asks his mother Elsa about it and she replies that the family is hosting a party that night for the promotion of their father Ralph, a Nazi officer. At night, Ralph informs his children that they are leaving Berlin and headed towards the countryside as he has been appointed as the commanding officer of a concentration camp. Hearing this, Bruno gets very sad as he has to leave his childhood friends. However, Elsa assures them that he will be able to make new friends in the new place. In the next scene, Bruno and his family arrive in their new home in occupied Poland. It is a two-story house with a garden surrounded by high walls. While peeking through the window of his new room, Bruno notices some houses far away. He believes that the houses belong to farmers and assumes that there are children playing there. He then tells his mother about the farmers who wear striped pajamas, which he finds a little strange. Meanwhile, an elderly man enters the kitchen and brings fresh vegetables for the day. While the man enters to put the vegetables down on the counter, Bruno notices that he is wearing the same striped pajamas he saw before. Curious about what Bruno is referring to, Elsa looks to the man's ankles as he leaves and learns the actual truth. In the next scene, we see Bruno inside his father Ralph's office where he is questioning him about the farmers wearing pajamas. Ralph tells him that the ones wearing striped pajamas are not people at all. Meanwhile, Elsa finds out that the farm Bruno is referring to is actually a concentration camp for Jews. Furious, Elsa enters Ralph's office and confronts him about the camp. Still, they let Bruno think that this is a farm where farmers wear striped pajamas. They also forbid Bruno from making friends and playing over there. The window from which Bruno could see the camp is also blocked for obvious reasons. Many days pass by and Bruno is playing all alone in his new house. He is sad to be alone and without any friends. One day while he is playing in the front garden, he notices a small door that leads to the backyard of the house. Quietly, he tries to sneak inside and explore, but is noticed by Elsa, who calls him inside. Bruno is now forced to stay inside and get used to his new house. During dinner, Ralph informs him that he has arranged a tutor for Bruno and his sister Gretel. Bruno seems excited about the fact that he does not have to go to school because the school is coming to him. In the next scene, while Bruno is playing on a swing, he notices some smoke in the sky. He tries to stand and look for the place where the smoke is coming from, but in the process, falls from the swing and gets hurt. The old man picks him up and provides him with first aid. Bruno is skeptical about the bandaging and thinks he should see a doctor. However, the old man assures him that he is fine and mentions that he used to be a doctor himself. The old man introduces himself as Pavel and Bruno is surprised about the fact that a doctor is working in his house and peeling potatoes. Soon, Elsa arrives and witnesses Pavel taking care of the injured Bruno. She looks a bit confused, but thanks Pavel for his work. In the following scene, Bruno is looking through his sister's window and notices an old man riding a bicycle, whom he assumes to be their new teacher. Bruno is right, and the teacher starts to teach them about the Nazi regime and its history. Bruno, who wants to read adventure books, gets a big bulky history book instead. Later, as Bruno is reading through his boring history book, he notices the door to the backyard open, and this time, quickly runs towards the shed. He goes through the window and steps into the open forest to explore. Without knowing where the path is leading him, Bruno follows the trail and reaches the camp which he believes to be the farm. The camp is surrounded by barbed wire fence, and all the people inside are wearing similar striped pajamas with a number on them. On the other side, Bruno notices a boy of his age sitting alone. He can notice the huge contrast between the appearance of the boys and the surroundings they are living in, despite both of them being the same age. Bruno introduces himself and gets to know that the other boy's name is Shmuel. Shmuel tells him that he is hungry and asks if Bruno has brought anything to eat. Bruno has empty pockets but quietly decides that he will bring something for him the next time. He thinks that Shmuel is part of a game as he notices the numbers on his clothes. Shmuel replies that the number has nothing to do with any games and quickly returns to the camp after a guard starts whistling. Bruno also returns home and starts reading with his new tutor. The next day, Bruno arrives at the camp with a chocolate bar for Shmuel. But this time, Shmuel does not show up. Bruno pays several visits to Shmuel, often bringing food with him. Finally, Bruno learns that Shmuel is a Jew who was brought to the camp with his parents. Bruno also asks Shmuel about the smoke coming from the chimneys, and he replies that he doesn't know and that he is not allowed to go anywhere near. Bruno then returns to his home, promising to meet Shmuel soon. Later, we see Bruno asking his father about the smoke. Ralph answers that the smoke is coming from the burnt garbage in the chimneys. After some time, Elsa visits Gretel's room and is suspicious about what their tutor is teaching them, as she notices several Nazi war posters on her wall. The teacher can be seen teaching the children about the Jews, implying that they are evil and are the main cause of the downfall of the country. 
However, Bruno, who is thinking of Shmuel, retaliates by saying that not all Jews are evil. After the class, he decides to visit Shmuel and remembers to pack some food for him. He cleverly steps out of his house and reaches the camp. He gives the food he brought to Shmuel and watches him while he finishes it. Shortly after, Bruno throws his football inside the camp to play with Shmuel, but a scared Shmuel throws it back. Shmuel then hides behind the pillars, telling Bruno that it will be trouble if someone notices them together. Meanwhile, Elsa is also disturbed by the foul smell coming from the chimneys. Lieutenant Kotler tells her that the smoke coming from the camp is caused by the burning of Jewish bodies. Hearing this, Elsa is shocked and immediately heads to confront Ralph. Ralph explains to her that he has been promoted to execute Jews, but Elsa is horrified to see what her husband has become. At the dinner table, Pavel accidentally spills the wine while serving Kotler and gets brutally beaten by him. Bruno is affected by this and starts crying with his sister, questioning if his father is really a good person. One day while roaming around the house, Bruno notices Shmuel inside one of the rooms, cleaning the wine glasses. He is happy to see him and hands him some food. Shmuel accepts the food and starts eating. But before he could finish it, Kotler arrives there and accuses him of stealing food. He shouts angrily at Shmuel, who replies that he hasn't stolen the food and that it was handed to him by his friend Bruno. Kotler then turns to Bruno and confronts him. Afraid, Bruno lies to him, telling him that he doesn't know Shmuel and is seeing him for the first time. Hearing this, Kotler believes Shmuel is a thief and asks him to meet him after work. Inside his room, Bruno feels guilty for putting Shmuel in danger. He immediately rushes to the camp but fails to find Shmuel there. Disappointed, he returns to his home, only to see some army men arriving at his house. Ralph welcomes them and they head to a room to take a look at the documentary film about the life in the concentration camp. Bruno also secretly watches the documentary and notices that the children are playing around and the families are enjoying their time inside. This is actually a fake documentary fed to the outside world to hide the atrocities of the Nazis. Bruno, who is still too young to understand all this, hugs his father after the documentary, thinking of him as a good man. Afterwards, Bruno heads to the camp to meet Shmuel. When he gets there, he notices Shmuel has an injured right eye as a result of Kotler's punishment. Bruno apologizes for his mistake and makes amends with Shmuel. Shmuel forgives him and shakes hands with Bruno. Elsa, on the other hand, is greatly affected by her husband's cruel nature. She is also afraid about her children's future living around the concentration camp. Seeing all this, Ralph decides to send his children back to Berlin. He informs Bruno about the return, but he does not want to go away. Ralph mentions to him that they are leaving with his mother in a few days. Bruno gets sad and immediately visits Shmuel to tell him that he is going away. Shmuel does not respond to it, as he is already sad about the fact that his father is missing from the day before. To make up for his earlier mistake, Bruno decides to help Shmuel find his father before leaving for Berlin. He notices that he could dig a hole with a stick to get past the wires. Before returning home, Bruno asked Shmuel to get him a striped outfit so that he could help find his father. The next day, Bruno prepares the last sandwich for Shmuel and is ready to visit him. He lies to Elsa that he is going to play on the swing for the last time before going to Berlin. Elsa also agrees to let him play outside, thinking that he will eventually get away from the evil place. Bruno then takes a shovel and runs towards Shmuel. Meanwhile, Shmuel has brought a pair of pajamas for Bruno. He puts them on and starts digging under the wire. After some time, Bruno manages to crawl inside and they run towards the camp to search for Shmuel's father. Elsewhere, Elsa notices that Bruno is nowhere near the swing and starts searching for him. She nervously looks everywhere in the house but fails to find him. Shortly after, she notices the door to the backyard open and runs inside to look for Bruno. She learns that Bruno has jumped through the window of the shed as she notices a sandwich dropped right below the opening. After that, a quick search is ordered, and with the help of sniffer dogs and other army officers, they start heading through the forest to the camp. Soon, Bruno and Shmuel enter a hut and begin searching for his missing father. At the same time, a group of soldiers arrive there and order everyone inside the hut to get outside. The two kids are trapped between the group of men and are forced to move in the direction where the group is heading. Since Bruno is wearing the same striped dress, no one can tell that he is not a Jew. The inmates are then taken to a changing room and told to remove their clothes for a shower. Meanwhile, Ralph finds Bruno's clothes just outside the fence and realizes that his son is now inside the camp. He quickly enters the camp and orders his officers to look for Bruno. Elsa grabs Bruno's clothes and starts crying, shouting his name. Meanwhile, Bruno and Shmuel are led into a gas chamber, oblivious to what is going on until a Nazi soldier pours the poisonous gas inside. While other Jews panic, Bruno and Shmuel hold each other's hands because they don't understand what's going to happen. After not finding Bruno in any hut, Ralph realizes that a mass execution is taking place and cries out his son's name. At the fence, Elsa and Gretel hear Ralph's cries. 
Elsa falls to her knees and weeps in despair. The gas chamber goes silent, indicating that all the prisoners, including Bruno and Shmuel, are dead. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.